on Tuesday, which might lead to the lifting of a ban on openly gay people serving in the American military. Under the current policy, known as don't ask, don't tell, homosexual soldiers are required to hide their sexuality and can be discharged if it becomes public. President Obama has called on Congress to repeal the law. From Washington, here's Steve Kingston. U.S. Marines on patrol in Helmand. But as they fight the Taliban, other battle lines are being drawn back in Washington over soldiers' sexuality. He believes gay people should be allowed to serve openly in the military, a message that rang out in last week's State of the Union address. This year, I will work with Congress and our military to finally repeal the law that denies gay Americans the right to serve the country they love because of who they are. That law is known as Don't Ask, Don't Tell, a Clinton-era compromise in which gay soldiers must keep their sexuality hidden or else lose their jobs. Those who've been there say it's unworkable. The bonds of trust that are absolutely necessary are inhibited by Don't Ask, Don't Tell. When you're hiding something, when you're forced to make up lies, and you're around these people 24-7, they can tell. Um, and it's unrealistic to place that sort of burden on anybody serving, gay or straight. Don't Ask, Don't Tell has cost the military careers of more than 13,000 people, some with valuable specialist knowledge, including translators of Arabic. The president has told military commanders this is a priority. On Tuesday, they'll present a tentative way forward to lawmakers. But Republicans in Congress are hardly rushing to embrace this proposal. Some insist the current policy works. Others, that the debate is a distraction from fighting two wars, domestic terror and the economic crisis. Will the military accept it? Will Congress vote for it? Once again, the promise of change faces a formidable test. Steve Kingston, BBC News, Washington. Well, joining me from New York is Richard Socorides. He's a White House uh, advisor on gay rights during the Clinton administration. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, how political is this? How much of this is about uh, President Obama simply trying to shore up his, his liberal credentials at a time when, you know, he's, he's hurting? Well, it's been very political up till now. I mean, um, President Obama, when he campaigned for president, um, promised that he would end this policy and suggested he would do so quickly. And he's been under a lot of pressure this first year um, to do it. He's been delaying. There was a report yesterday in the New York Times that he was focusing on health care in the first year and didn't want to upset social conservatives in the U.S. Uh, during his first year of his presidency. But he was under enormous pressure from uh, people in the gay rights community to get this done. And it now looks like today, later today, we will hear for the first time ever from the Pentagon uh, that the time has come to allow openly gay people to serve in the military. It's a bit of a history in the struggle for gay rights in the United States. But if, if as you say, health care provoked the social conservatives, as, as you put them, what on earth is this measure going to do? Well, I think it's an interesting moment in the politics of uh, uh, here in, in the U.S. I think that as the president moves to the center on many things, including probably health care and, uh, and overall uh, fiscal issues, that he has to, he's realizing he has to shore up his base a little bit. So he's moving a little bit to the, to the middle the political middle in the U.S. on on many fiscal issues, but but yet this allows him a little bit to move to the left on issues like this. But it, I mean, okay, trying to stay with the politics of the of this, healthcare is not done and dusted yet. If you bring up another divisive issue like this, isn't there uh, some danger of a backdraft affecting some of the other things he wants to do? Climate change as well, for example. Well, there is, there is that danger. I think that, you know, you had sort of a perfect storm. A lot of things have come together on this. I mean, he's been under this enormous pressure from many people, including myself, uh, over this past year to move on this. Uh, he, he's faced with having to defend a policy that he called unconstitutional. He's faced to, with having to defend this policy in court later on this year. Um, there, there's actually even a Senate race in New York, uh, a, a new senator named uh, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, who's running uh, for uh, election here for the first time in New York State. So even a little local politics ent enters into it. She's been a longtime advocate of repealing this ban. So as part of this is an effort to help her out even. Just give me, um, Mr. Socorides, an example of how the debate might go. If I were to say to some a socially conservative person in America, look, Lots of us in Europe, in our armies in Europe, we, we've dealt with this issue. It's not a problem. 
Uh, what would, how, would the, how might they react to that kind of argument? Well, it's difficult. You're asking me to make the argument that I inherently oppose. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I, I mean, I think what they say is that um, this is a distraction, that we're trying to fight these, that we're trying to, we have, we have trying to prosecute two wars, and that this is a distraction now. I mean, most of, the, most of the arguments have fallen away, you know, as gay people are more open and honest about who they are and become socially acceptable, it becomes so, more socially acceptable throughout the world. Uh, these, these arguments have fallen away, and, and really that's probably why today we're, we have this big moment, because, uh, you know, there are no more arguments left to make. What's your gut instinct? I mean, you were there when the Clinton administration, when, when President Clinton tried to, tried to deal with this is issue. Do you think times have changed enough? Is, is America, in other words, ready for this? Well, I think it's we're long past ready. The, the truth is, is that the military is one of the most conservative social institutions in this country, and th this is uh, this is sort of the among the last to go. And I think that uh, the question you ask is is very very relevant because uh, one wonders once this falls, once this bar falls, uh, you know, probably the next thing to go is the uh, re the restrictions on gay marriage in the U.S. And I think we're quickly approaching a day in the U.S. where we'll have full equality for gay and lesbians. This, this, I believe, will be a fairly significant moment. I mean, we don't, people don't quite appreciate it yet, and it's, it's brought about with some nuance and some subtlety today, but when the, when the leaders of the U.S. military, the strongest military on earth ever, come forward and say that gay people uh, should be allowed to serve and, and everything will be just fine, we'll still be the strongest, we'll still be the best ever on earth, um, it's going to be a significant moment. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. That was really uh, fascinating and interesting. Thank you very much, Richard Soccerides. Thank, Thank you, you, George. And don't forget, you can get more on all the day's stories online.